Hello everyone, this is Diane. I have a 1940s cooking food themed um, journal ready to show to you. This one had been reserved, so um, this will not be in my shop. But I am working on this one to put in my shop. So I'm not going to put this one in. I'm not going to send this off to its new home until I... Um, I'm using these pages that I decorated as a guide for how to do these. I can do it quicker that way. And they'll be, they'll be a lot different because totally different uh, themes. They're both 40s, but this one was food and cooking, and this one is ladies and fashion. But let's look at this one. Now, I recently got a collection of these buckles. Um, plastic. I was wondering if they were Bakelite, but I don't think they are. I think they're just plastic. And uh, this one has a textured pattern. They don't all... Uh, so I just used a vintage apron tie and this buckle to create the closure for the book. And it just comes right off. So I just looped it through there and sewed it. And it makes a really nice little sash. So this was made with a 1940s cookbook called The Searchlight Recipe Book from Household Magazine. And it's in really good condition for the 1940s. I've had copies of this book that were really in bad shape. And they were from different decades, probably. Uh, I put some vintage yo-yos yo on here. They might be from the 40s also. I would say they are at least from the 40s. And then a a real genuine milk bottle cap, some feed sack fabric, and vintage rickrack. So everything here is vintage. And I just put a piece of, of crochet trim, and this is a cotton trim. This is from Hobby Lobby uh, down the spine. I left the end papers the way they were because they're just uh, vintage looking and the bright colors from that era and some ticking fabric. It's a thin cotton. It's not a thick, heavy ticking, but it's got that design on it, and it's green. Got that in a Happy Mail, and some more vintage or crack. This scrapbook paper, I think I got that at a flea market in a bunch of papers, and it has a pea design. Can you see? Peas in the pod and the flower. And it's double-sided, so just a couple of the pages that I used were double-sided. And I made this pocket on the front, and this is an image from a vintage apron pattern from the 40s or 50s. And this is another vintage milk bottle cap, and this one is for cherry-flavored drink. I put crochet. This is vintage crochet trim on the edges of each uh, front page of the signatures. <clears throat> I cut a lot of images from vintage magazines, so here's one. I just uh, glued two of the cut off pieces of paper together. I used a bread tab, bread tag for the tab, and you can write on the back. <clears throat> I did some stenciling on the white pages. I used a digital, I'll have to link it below, I cannot remember. Um, but it was uh, some digital pages. I did not use much of the ephemera. I just wanted to use my vintage stuff, but I did include a few pieces of the ephemera. Here is a Miracle Sandwich Spread jar that came from a vintage magazine. I turned it into a paper clip and clipped on one of these Kellogg's menu cards that I had gotten at the flea market. And those are from the 40s. They were during the war. Coffee dyed paper. And then this is a vintage spice label. I got two sets of those. Uh, one is this color and one set was white. And I think these were from the 70s and the others were from the 60s. But they look like they could be from the 40s. This is one of the digital ephemera pieces that I did include. And this is a bright colored um, paper, dyed paper, and I added this vintage trim. I created library pockets, which I did in a video. 
and this is a vintage magazine image. These are actually vintage library pockets. I just covered them and included a card and a digital card. This one is from, I can't remember, Sweet Pea Curiosities maybe. Now, I was a little bit irritated when I printed these because I thought my printer was making lines, but it's got a wallpaper background and the wallpaper has the lines and the, the lines go all the way through. So that's the way it's supposed to be. This is from a deep freeze booklet on how to, it's advertising this freezer, but it talks about how to freeze different types of foods. And it had these really neat pictures of, of housewives. I don't know why she's wearing that hat while she's showing her freezer, but I guess it goes with the dress. And I made some fabric flips out of vintage tablecloths, and they have stains because they were used tablecloths. That's vintage eyelet up there. Graphic 45 paper. And here I just, because you can't really write on the back of that paper, I added this paper you could write on, and her, this lady from a vintage magazine, and I don't know what she was holding. I had cut it out away from her hand when I cut her out, whatever it was. I don't remember why I did that, but I did. And then I found this box of Domino confectioner sugar that I could fit back into her hand. So it looks like it came that way. And this is um, kitchen measures and wedding anniversaries. It came with a little booklet. Here is some shelf liner that might have been from the 40s. I don't know how old it is. It's um, decorative shelf edging. This part would sit on the shelf under your plates and stuff, and this would fold down and look decorative when you opened up your cupboard. This is a pale green uh, music score paper. It was a nice large size, so I used it. These books are larger than the normal books I make. And this was cut from a vintage tablecloth, and I got it in a Happy Mail with a whole bunch of tablecloth cut out pieces a while ago and so I included one of these in each signature and a yo-yo. A this is a newer yo-yo than what I put on the front. This is another of the digital pieces I glued down. Some more stenciling on that page. And there were two of these full pages from Sweet Pea Curiosities so I put one in the center of a signature in each of the two different journals. So it just shows different images from um, 1940s. And these were both digital images. Here's one of Virginia's clusters. This is, this was in my stash of homemade, of uh, handmade ephemera. It's just a strip of coffee dyed paper and I glued a bunch of stuff to it. It's got rickrack, it's got loyalty stamps, and a couple of, oh, there's a little fabric, and a couple of little die cut ephemera pieces from Kathy Holden. Here I added a vintage note paper from a journaling, from a little memo book you would carry in your pocket. And we did this on a video, making ephemera out of the magazine images. I did this die cut and then it's got vintage rickrack and a little vintage daisy. This could be from the 40s too. It came out of a little booklet. It's got little staple holes in it. I just love the colors of this, the green. It's in really good condition, but it's um, about canning with Kerr canning jars. She's washing some vegetables here, so maybe she's prepping them for canning. Uh, we did this one on a video also, I believe, the lady at her sink, and I added one of those spice labels there and a little strip of fabric. And this was during the war. This battle station is closer to the fighting front than you may think. And I added this advertisement for shredded wheat. I just so, um, glued it to paper 
think I meant to cut that off. I thought I did cut it off, but it must have stuck to it because it's cut in some places, but there we go. So there's that. And I added a large blue index card. Another page from the deep freeze. Oh, that's the same page. We're still on the first signature. This one has a pocket from an apron. Really, really cute pocket. It's got strawberries on it. And this was in my stash of just um, a card made from a collage master board. And then this is a vintage 1940s paper doll original. Her name is Mary Lou. And in this vintage ice cream wrapper, we have her outfits. Mary Lou's outfits are all in there. I don't know how old this ice cream wrapper is, but I got that at a flea market or an antique market. And I made a paper clip out of the Q-tip image. Stamped down here, it looks like a recipe card. And I added the stamp for poultry. And on this page, I just paper clipped a piece of white toast. This was used in a educational setting. It's from 1974 from the National Dairy Council. Now I had gotten a bunch of these from, I think the paper basket quite a while ago. <clears throat> and then I got a batch of them on eBay recently and the ones that I got had all of the food on plates if it was applicable. There might be, you know, a piece of fruit without a plate, but food like this was on plates. But the ones that I got from Paper Basket were not. So I think, I don't know what the age of mine are. I'll have to, to look and see. Mine. These are all mine. I bought them. But, you know, the ones I ordered from eBay. All right, here we have a plain page that I stamped. It says Home Cooking inked around the edge and this is another vintage shelf liner but this did not come with the full page the full paper to lay on your counter it just had a little bit of an edge to fold around I imagine you would have to use some sort of adhesive so I put this um, washi tape over the white piece I cut some of the white off and I added some vintage coupons and these are not from the 40s they're from the 70s and this was in my stash. I had made this. I did a video on uh, making ephemera out of book images and I got her these out of a craft craft books. Well, the quilt was out of craft books. I think she was out of a cookbook. America expects every cook to do her duty. So this was during the war also. This is a vintage decal. I just left it on its backing and glued it down as a pocket. I love the colors. I think it looks really good with this, the colors in this pea pod paper. And I put a vintage label up here that says peas and included this tag that was in my stash already made. She's from a vintage magazine and that's from a children's dictionary. On this side, we have another label that says beans, and another milk bottle cap, another pocket made from Vintage Magazine, and then these came out of some sort of a, a booklet about appliances that you could buy. They might be from the 50s, though. This says, busy family breakfast, temptingly good, easy to serve, high in energy value. I don't know what they were advertising, but I put this card that I've had for quite a long time uh, about a pancake supper in the Flemingville Grange Hall, sponsored by Young Adult Fellowship of Flemingville M.E. Church. I don't know how old that is, but pancake breakfast goes with that. And then you can have cake for dessert, toasty coconut cocoa cake <laughs> after breakfast. 
Here is a vintage current postcard just to let you know what's cooking. And there's a jello cherry flavor jello box here as a paper clip. Here's the white stickers. Um, I think these were the 1960s spice labels. That's what I'm trying to think of. This was out of a vintage magazine, Land Lakes. It looks pretty much the same now, doesn't it? And some vintage trim. This is a coupon that came in Betty Crocker cake mixes. And you could collect the coupons and then uh, redeem them for silver silverware. They came in other General Mills boxes also. And this is one of the digital tags. You have to be careful putting that coupon in because it's brittle. There's another library pocket. A lady on her phone. I have wallpaper sampler pieces down here as my background and they keep shifting. Another uh, tablecloth and it's got quite a few stains on it. I think all of the tablecloth pieces that I use for flips came from the same tablecloth. There's another shelf liner. This is a digital, and I stamped up there. It says soup. I've never heard of Weetabix. Is that like a shredded wheat? I don't know. This is a vintage label. It says storage label. And it looks like she has a stack of linens in her hand. She's putting them in storage. She's a digital. I added a little fabric cluster that I made. And then I could have made this a tuck spot, but I didn't. I just glued it down. It was a large Rice Krispie ad, and I had to cut it up into pieces and figure out how I was going to arrange it on the page, and then I didn't even think about making it a, a tuck spot. But we have a tuck spot on the back. Now, this was quite big also, and this SOS thing would, was, was over here, and then there was more over here. So I had to trim it down, and I debated on whether I wanted to include the SOS on there, but I did. I wanted to, so there it is. And this is from the American Meat Institute, Eat the Right Foods. And there's a, like a, kind of like a ledger card. And then this is from a 1950s um, planner or schedule book or appointment book. This image, I cut this part out of the bottom and glued it up here so you'd know it's from June 1942 Good Housekeeping. Here I used a tablecloth piece to make a pocket and I just put in one of these cards and a tag that was in my stash and another of the food. This is perch. Fried perch. Food cards from the National Dairy Council. Another recipe card stamped. It says bread. This is from a magazine. Just a sink. They were advertising these rubber liners and here and then this little thing there. They were advertising all kinds of things for your sink. It was a large, I think maybe a two-page two spread. I put that on cardstock, and there's a recipe card in there, and this card that was in my stash, collaged card. I can't find that stamp. I looked for her, and I can't find her. I made that a long time ago. This was another large magazine page. It showed the entire kitchen, but I decided to cut it down and make it into a card. More people are cooking with gas today than ever before. She's got a cake, all decorated and candles lit. 
doesn't have tomatoes in it though I don't think and this is a paint chip and the last signature we have some more Rice Krispies on the front US needs us strong eat nutritional food so another wartime ad this paper all of these papers the polka dots in this one and the peas all came in the same set I don't have the whole set I just had assorted papers that I got at the flea mark at the flea market or antique mall or something this is an ad for pen gel um, an apple pectin has a coupon you can write on the back and there's a milk bottle cap sun-filled orange juice so it's actually an orange juice bottle cap I did some stamping on this page and with the stenciling my mommy is the smartest of all my breakfast tastes so good and mother says it has vitamin B1 as nature provides it and there's mother jumping rope and and father and son boxing everybody is so healthy because they eat shredded wheat so this is the shredded wheat that was part of this ad and this tag is inside I'm going to put something some seam binding in there I couldn't keep house without Scott towels and I just bought some Scott towels the other day yesterday it does go in there oh my goodness it does I promise there's some oregano spice label this was part of the digital circus Spanish peanuts and some vintage trim another library pocket Quaker Oats and the last tablecloth flip it's got some pretty trim up here cotton trim and this vintage embroidered trim this came out of a 1943 magazine and it was like this wall of these jars I don't know if these came in glass jars did they and another shelf label with cherries on it digital this is funny extra extra news that's hot spam and pancakes hit the spot how to have spam cakes another digital the lady ironing there's a cluster that I made and I had another of the long strips with a digital and a stamped image and some loyalty stamps these came out of a magazine and it was all of these were in one ad here's tempting coolness for your guests refreshment for a warm and wilted family and it was jello recipes I have another piece that came from that ad too coming up this came off of a vintage uh, apron pattern and I added this to write on and this was something else you could also write on that it's a form to order a recipe book here's a little girl in the 40s and this was um, from that freezer ad, uh, booklet and this talks about the packed lunch Here's the other piece that came with the Jello ad. It's got pictured Jello treats, and I just glued it to a piece of cardstock. Made a little booklet, little folder. <clears throat> this is from a um, linen towel that you would hang in the kitchen, and I just glued it to some fabric and sewed some rickrack on it. And this is a time card that I had collaged on it. This this was in my stash got some more saver stamps so some of these things were probably done in a stash history about using up some of those saver stamps because I have quite a few of those pieces that were in my stash already done and this is a tag I'm not sure where I got it but it has this lady on it and whoops 
recipe blank so you can write recipes on it. Perfect for this journal. And she looks like she's from the 40s. And on here I have a, a T-bone steak and another collaged card with minute rice from an old magazine. The rice could go with the steak. And some more stamps. This is a piece of a canned pea label. This was all I had left. I must have used the other pieces in something else. But I glued it to a piece of heavier paper and just made a pocket out of it. And this was already in my stash. So that was perfect. It's more Rice Krispies. Their magic sound makes youngsters hungry. This is quite sturdy because I put card cardstock under this and this is a cardstock. There's cardstock there. And there's the back page. I didn't put a pocket on it. I put my signature right there. I love this book. I'm having a hard time wanting to give up either one of these 1940s books, but I am selling both of them. And I've already got a good start on the other one. So it shouldn't be long before I have that one ready. Hopefully I'll have it ready before I go away for the weekend for my niece's wedding. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this book. Tell me what you think of it. And make sure you come back to see the flip through of this one. Because this one will be in my shop. So I hope you're having a great day and a creative one. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.